The majority of people aspire to be individuals of knowledge and perhaps one of the clearest evidences of this is that nobody accepts the description of jahil, ignorant. Even if the person at hand fits this description very well. But we, by our nature, hate this description because it is ingrained within the heart of every human being to recognize that knowledge is a lofty position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave superiority to Adam over the angels. But what was the element that gave him that position over them? It was the station of knowledge. Allah said, Allah taught Adam the names of all things. It was knowledge. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given superiority to some animals over others. Simply because of the element of knowledge. The food that is caught by that hunting animal that is trained by you is halal for you. And we understand that the food that is caught by the hunting animal that is not trained, it's dead meat, it's maita, it's haram. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abi Hurairah, whoever pursues a path for knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease for him or her a path that leads to Jannah. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that human beings, they are not equal. Allah said, He will raise the people of belief from amongst you and those who were given knowledge in high degrees. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in Surah Al-Zumar, are those people who have knowledge equal to those who don't? We understand the answer. The answer is, they are not equal. They are not equal in their lives. They are not equal in their actions. They are not equal in their intentions. They are not equal when they die. They are not equal in their grave. They are not equal when they are resurrected. They are not equal during their reckoning the Hisab. They will not be equal when they cross over the bridge leading over the hellfire. And they will not be equal in the gardens of Jannah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not equal. The people of knowledge and the rest of us. May Allah Jalla Jalaluhu teach us. Today we want to uncover some of the signs to reassure us that the knowledge which we are acquiring is in fact taking us in the direction of Jannah. Because mankind will realize on the day of judgment that not every path of ilm knowledge will lead to paradise. Rather, some human beings, students of knowledge, attendees of halaqat, attendees of Friday sermons, people who had memorized the text and subscribed to courses, will be shocked on the day of standing when they see the angels of Allah Almighty being commanded to take them to a destination that they had not prepared for. And that is because the Messenger وسلم, warned us that not every aspect of knowledge is beneficial. And thus Ibn Majah narrates in his sunan on the authority of our mother Umm Salama that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say in his dua every single morning before he finishes his salatul fajr, before he gives salam, he would say, Oh Allah, I ask you for knowledge that is beneficial. And I ask you for rizq, provisions that is good. And I ask you for actions of mine to be accepted by you. Every morning he is begging Allah for beneficial knowledge. And therefore we ask the question, what are the signs that the knowledge which I am pursuing, you are pursuing, is taking us in the right direction? What are the signs that our knowledge is not going to cause us fear and horror following the very first glance that we take at the face of the angel of death when our time is up. What are the signs that knowledge is nafir? They are many, and therefore we will only be discussing four of them, perhaps the most famous of them, and perhaps the most important as well. The first of these signs 
Beneficial knowledge is that which brings about in the heart of people True khashya, fear of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu This is undoubtedly the chief of all signs Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this explicitly in the Quran Surah Fatir Allah said It is only the people of knowledge from amongst the slaves of Allah who truly fear him They understand his divine names and majestic attributes they have understanding of the halal and the haram and the seerah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and thus their heart is filled with all oh, hayba, fear, rahba, hope, raja in Allah jalla jalalu. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he would also say he said knowledge is not about memorizing many narrations knowledge is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would also say sufficient is the fear of Allah as a product of knowledge. That is enough. And sufficient is self-deception, self-admiration as a product of ignorance, he said. Dear brother, dear sister, if the knowledge that you are amassing on a weekly or a daily basis, may Allah bless you, is not restraining you from missing salah or delaying it. If your knowledge is not encouraging you to revisit your finances and your investments, and your God-given hours, how you are investing those. If your knowledge is not preventing you from raising a bruising fist at your spouse, if your knowledge is not preventing you from answering back at your mother and father, then this is not the type of knowledge that will rescue you on the day of judgment. Knowledge is that voice that you constantly hear in your head, in your heart, in your soul, speaking to you. It never leaves you. Always advising you. Rearranging your priorities, managing your actions, managing your reactions, knocking sense into our heads the moment we raise a hand to haram, or our eyes to haram, or our ears or wealth to haram, knowledge screams at you. It says, what are you doing? Don't you fear Allah? Have shyness of Allah. Where is your haya? This is the benefit of knowledge. It is such a loyal advisor. It is such an honest friend never leaves you alone, taking you by the hand, introducing you to the majesty of Allah, reminding you of His divine names and His perfect attributes, so that you never consider doing a haram, and when you do, your knowledge says, wait, it screams at you, and it stops you in your tracks. This is the purpose of knowledge. And if a person's knowledge is not doing that for him, whether it's an online desire or an offline desire, then it could be that you have fallen into one of the four categories that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very afraid of. When he would say in his dua as Muslim, the rights on the authority of Zayd ibn Arqam, Oh Allah, I ask you to protect me from knowledge that doesn't benefit me. And I ask you to protect me from a heart that stays hard. And I ask you to protect me from having desires that never fill. And I ask you to protect me from a dua that you do not answer. A person whose knowledge does not cause him to fear Allah and change his life, his knowledge is of no use. His heart is hard, his desires will not be filled, and his dua will hardly ever be answered. And how beautiful, therefore, were the words of Abdul A'la Tamimi as he said, Whoever gains knowledge that does not cause him to cry over himself, then this is a person who has not gained beneficial knowledge. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in description of the people of knowledge, He said they fall to their faces crying when they hear the Quran being recited and it increases them in humility, they cry. Thus your knowledge may be growing, but is it causing you to grow? This is the first, dear brother, dear sister, major sign of beneficial knowledge taking to Jannah or knowledge that is taking to another destination. It's increasing you in the fear of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. The second sign. Beneficial knowledge, dear brother, dear sister, is that which commands application there and then. It encourages you to do something about it immediately, without any delay. Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah, he said, I have not written and memorized any of the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu except after I first apply it. They memorized hundreds of thousands. Imam Ahmad memorized one million narrations he had memorized. How many did he apply therefore? All of them perhaps. 
News came to Ahmad that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam engaged in hijama, cupping therapy, and he gave Abu Tayba, the cupping therapist, one dinar. So Imam Ahmad engaged in cupping and he gave the therapist one dinar. News came to Ahmad, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hid in the cave when he was escaping Mecca for three days. So Imam Ahmad found the cave and stayed within it for three days. This was the purpose of knowledge according to them, immediate application. How beautiful were the words of Al Hassan al Basri who said, He said, A person in the past, when he used to begin a path of knowledge, immediately you would see the influence of knowledge upon his eyes, upon his speech, upon his actions, upon his salah, upon his humility, upon his minimalism and rejection of dunya. This was the purpose of knowledge according to them, immediate application, not with the intention of teaching it to others, teaching it to himself to save himself, to reform himself before anybody else. Abu Qilaba said to Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani, he said, Ayyub, if Allah Almighty gives you a new bit of knowledge, then make sure you introduce for it a new bit of worship. And do not make your main intention in life to teach that knowledge to others. Your main intention is to take care of yourself, to save yourself. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he said, he said, if I was to spend my daylight hours acting like a fool and spending my night hours acting like an ignorant person, then what is the purpose of the knowledge that I am amassing? What is the purpose of it? It is a scary observation. Those brothers and sisters who have an interest in Islamic knowledge, but you see how they behave during the day and night, and sometimes it is below average. It is not befitting for them excessively socializing endlessly recreational activities addicted to the games console responding to desires in ways that don't befit a student of knowledge or perhaps just spending hours upon hours of argumentation debate a political matter that has no real application in our lives hours and hours and this is why the messenger said alayhi salatu was salam as ibn Imam Tirmidhi narrates in his jami' on the authority of Abu Umama. Any people who end up going astray after the guidance Allah had given them, you find that they are very argumentative. If Allah wants good for you and me, dear brother, dear sister, He will open up for you the doors of action. And He will close for you the doors of jadal argumentation. But if Allah wants evil for a person, He will close for him the doors of action. It becomes boring, doesn't want to do it, can't be bothered. And he will open up for him the doors of jadal argumentation. These are two signs, dear brothers and sisters, for knowledge that is of true benefit. Number one, it brings about fear, khashya of Allah. And the second of this beneficial knowledge is that it brings about immediate action. You see the change in your reflection, in your speech, and your dress, and your ibadah. As for the remaining two signs. The third sign that knowledge is of benefit and will take a person, inshaAllah, to Jannah is that it produces within this person a genuine sense of humility that is real. This person, when offered two choices, will always take the safer of the two options. This person not only stays away from the haram, but this person will also stay away from the doubtful gray areas of Islam as well. This person, because of his knowledge that has brought about humility, is also not afraid to say la adri sorry i don't know the answer to your question he's confident to say that because he fears allah he has humility abdul rahman ibn abi layla he said i have met in this very mosque of ours no less than 120 companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and every single one of them who had knowledge wished that his brother would spare him the duty of teaching and to spare him the duty of responding to people's questions. They were not rushing to answer questions. They were afraid of saying halal and haram. Listen to the description of Ibn Sirin the Tabi'i. They said that whenever he would be asked about a question of halal or haram, his color would change, his demeanor would alter, and it would become as if it's a different personality that we previously knew. He was afraid to give an answer on behalf of Allah and His Messenger. Ata ibn Abi Rabah, he said, I have met people 
whom when they would be asked a question of halal and haram, their bodies would begin to shake. Fearing that they will say something that will displease Allah Jalla Jalalu. They said whenever Imam Malik would be asked about a question of halal and haram, he would look like he was a man who was standing between paradise and hell. La ilaha illallah. Umair ibn Sa'id, he said, I went to Alqama to ask him a question. Alqama, he said to me, go to Abida al-Aslami. So I went to Abid al-Aslami. I said to him, this is my question. He said to me, go and ask Alqama. He said, Alqama sent me to you. He said, okay, go ask Masruq ibn al-Ajda. So I went to Masruq ibn al-Ajda. I asked him the question. He said, please don't ask me. These are scholars. He said, please don't ask me. Go to Alqama. He said, I went to Alqama. Alqama sent me to Abid al-Aslami. And then Abid al-Aslami sent, sent me to you. He said, go to Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. So I went to Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. He didn't want to answer. So I went back to Alqama, the very first per person I approached. I said to him, I can't find an answer. He said, the scholars of Islam, they say, that those who are quickest to give answers to questions, they are the least of all people in knowledge. This is the third sign, that knowledge is of benefit. It produces real humility. You don't see yourself as great. Rather, you are afraid. You push away attention from yourself. You don't want to be the signpost of people to answer the question. You're not always the first to speak in the majalis, in the gatherings. You prefer to listen. You prefer to benefit. And you are scared of signing on behalf of Allah and His Messenger. This is the third sign. As for the fourth, and we will conclude with this. Beneficial knowledge, dear brother, dear sister. May Allah Almighty teach us is that knowledge that causes you to run away from fame. It causes you to run away from every type of attention. You fear the limelight. You fear the praise and admiration of people. Because you realize that an atom's weight of self-admiration can cause mountains of good deeds to come crashing down on the Day of Judgment. So the people of beneficial knowledge, they run away from fame. When the uncle of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal went to visit him, he saw Imam Ahmad with his hand on his cheek and he was in a clear state of misery and sadness. He said to him, what is wrong with you, O oh, Imam? Imam Ahmad raised his head to him. He said, Ya Am. He said to him, O oh, my uncle, how blessed, how fortunate is a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dulls his reputation. Ahmad was so famous at the time. He was scared. And Ahmed, he said, I wish that I could live in a valley in Mecca, away from the people. I want to be far away from the people living in a valley in Mecca somewhere, where nobody will know who I am. I have been afflicted with fame. And so I am asking Allah to cause me to die every morning and every evening. Ya Allah. Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani, he, he walked past a gathering. He said, Assalamu alaikum. And they said, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. They praised him. This is the Imam. So he knew that they had recognized him. So he said, It's as if Allah is punishing me. Ibrahim ibn Adham, he said, Any man who loves fame has not been true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, you may be amazed to know that the people of our past, when their halaqa, their circle of knowledge would grow, they would get up and leave. Abu Aliya, his halaqa, consisted of around one or two people. If they became three, he would get up and leave. Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash, they asked him, how many people did you see at the most in the halaqa of Imam Ibrahim al nakhai He said four or five at the most. Otherwise, he would get up and walk away. Is this how you behave, dear brother, when you are invited to a gathering to teach? How do you feel when it's only 20 people or 10 people who turn up or just five perhaps? How would you feel if nobody turned up? Does it bother you? Thank Allah that the people around you are few and so your mistakes will not be widespread. Thank Allah that your iman and your sincerity is guarded. Thank Allah that your good deeds are safer than others from collapsing on the day of judgment. It's not about the Facebook post, dear brothers and sisters. It's not about the retweets. It's not about the hundreds and thousands of followers on social media. We are bringing fame to ourselves. People before us didn't do that. So Allah rewarded them. We're still talking about them today. What social media did they have? La ilaha illallah. These dear brothers and sisters are some of the signs of beneficial knowledge. 
as we have therefore found out, beneficial knowledge that takes to Jannah breaks a person. It makes him great in the eyes of Allah, but very small in his own eyes. It allows him to accept advice. He has a rahmah upon others when giving them advice. Doesn't jump to conclusions. Makes him fear Allah. So a voice that speaks to him when he's about to disobey him. These are some of the signs of beneficial knowledge because we have discovered today that not every path of knowledge will lead to Jannah.